is up everybody welcome back to another video in today's video we're going to be talking about the detroit Lions' second round pick in the 2021 nfl draft levi onwu zorike so let's get it started hey up, we're going to bite a kneecap off and we're going to stand up and then it's going to take two more shots to knock us down and on the way up we're going to take your other kneecap and we're going to get up and then it's going to take three shots to get us down and when we do we're going to take another hunk out of you before before long, we're going to be the last one standing. Yes! He's the goal! Oh, he's the goal! There's nobody! Welcome everybody to our video. Glad you guys are here. And I tried so hard to get that name correct. And I don't know if I did. But we're going to stick to Levi for most of this video. We're talking about the defensive lineman out of Washington that the Detroit Lions said they consider trading into the first round to select the six foot three, 290 pound defensive lineman defensive lineman that back at high school won defensive player of the year he actually played with kyler murray in high school where they went 14 and 1 he came out as the 101st ranked prospect in the country where he chose to go to washington over teams like arizona state and michigan Dang, that would have been something if Levi was a Wolverine. Oh my gosh. Him, you know, like some of the defense line we put out, woo, that would have been special. But no, he chose Washington. Now, unfortunately, he opted out of last season. And we'll get to that a little bit more at the end of the film part. But I think with him is that the fact that he opted out last season leaves, yeah, some things to be desired because I think for him, there's things that need to be polished up to make him more consistent down to down, snap to snap. But it's also exciting because there's so much that could be polished up and there's so much that could be cleaned up, yet he was still dominant while that wasn't the case. There's a lot of things to like in his game. The first thing, obviously, is his versatility. And I know we throw that word around a lot, but he definitely deserves to get that word thrown his way. His length isn't great, which could limit him a little bit in a 3-4 defensive end, as that's what the Lions said their would be but because of the versatility of a 3-4 defensive front it doesn't mean that every snap it's lining against five t it's not five technique going against the tackle you move around a lot i mean you got three fours where you got three techs you know nose tackle you can, you can put them all over the defense line he's played all the different spots so that's awesome and it allows the line to do a lot of different things with him use him in a lot of different situations statistically speaking his numbers were really good in 2019 i mean he had four sacks 22 hurries but like i said he didn't play last season so there's still some things that need to be polished up which we'll take a look at in the film but yeah i mean statistically he was still a good player for washington and now he was the second round pick for the detroit lions with his versatility there's also a lot of things just athletically the intangibles that are just like dang we can build off of this like crazy he ran a 48540 which is nuts for 200 48540 the guy is jacked man he is super strong uh he's kind of a little top heavy but his upper body is very strong at 29 bench rest reps that's more than Aline mcneil who weighs about you know 20 pounds more than him it's the same as Derek barnes because Derek barnes is just ripped at a 30 inch vertical and a 109 inch broad jump athletically speaking he's above average in pretty much every category he has the explosiveness to his game and he has big hands like i said his arm length isn't great but he does have big hands so he checks a lot of boxes in terms of intangibles and just things that you can build off if you are the detroit lions and I think that's what makes him so exciting. Not necessarily what he is right now completely, even though there's a lot of things to like because production-wise, he was still super productive while not being the most cleaned up. But that, that makes sense. I mean, he's a college player, right? Not everything is going to be polished. Plus, we didn't get to see him last year. So it's still a limited sample size that we've gotten to see from Levi. However, what you can turn this guy into is what's going to be so exciting about his game. People are calling him mini Aaron Donald. And the Lions have just strictly got a pass rusher, you know, that can get after the quarterback. But the thing is, he adds more than just a pass rusher. He's also a really good run stopper as well. Uh, and, and we're going to look at some film. He works across the defensive line, moves laterally well. It helps him a lot in stunts. He can set those up. He can take the two offensive linemen. He could take one. I don't love him in two gapping situations, especially at nose tackle, but one gap attacking downhill, which I expect Lions defense to be. Oh, he can get after it. He can absolutely get after it. Now, he did rotate a little bit, which kept him fresh at Washington, but I expect him to rotate in Detroit. The Lions got the defense lineman to rotate. I think that's their plan is to rotate guys in and out, keep guys fresh. And that is what's going to make him a Lee McNeil. These guys scary is because, you know, you got guys that can get after it. Pressure guys are hard to find that can also stop the run. Run stoppers. They're tough, but you can find them. But run stoppers that have the upside of I can get after it, especially to Levi's extent for his production, that was a 15% pass rush win rate. 15%, that's super high. He always has a plan. He's athletic enough to throw in and mix up a lot of different pass rushers at you. I think there's a lot that could be added there. I think it's a blank canvas, but I think there's a lot that can be added to that. Yet he has the athleticism to throw a lot of different things at you. He's a very smart player, super aware of what's around him, the setup teammates. And uh, also he does a really nice job of setting his initial move up to really set the counter a lot of his plays come off of counter moves because he sets it up very well with his first move so a lot of times it's how do i set up that counter move and uh, he's also aware of who he's going against but he has tons of confidence himself we've heard his interviews and uh, levi is definitely a playmaker that you know what 
after watching Levi, I understand why people like Aleem McNeil so much. They were so happy about the pick. Because to me, Aleem McNeil, the fact that we got that dude in the third round is insane. That's not to say Aleem McNeil's better than Levi, but these guys can both play. And Levi, you know, he's not the most polished product, but I think what he can be is what the Lions are looking at here. And what he can be is outstanding. And he was still outstanding while not being the most polished, which is just impressive. So a lot of intangibles, speed, size, athleticism, it's all there. And then, of course, there's production to go along with it uh, that you can add to. And the confidence is through the roof so we're gonna take a look at some film from levi some good some bad i'm gonna kind of break it down a little bit and i'll see you guys there. So let's get into some of this levi on film I, i'm sorry i tried i think i said his name pretty close I hate messing up the names but you guys know that i do mess up the names he's wearing the number 95 in this play right here uh he is the nose tackle he's going against cal we're going to show some film he's played a lot of different spots he's lined up in a lot of different defenses he's played in four man fronts three man fronts he's played three tech one tech zero tech i mean he's played a lot of different positions amongst the defensive line he can line up against the tackle i think for him in the nfl it seems like he's best suited to play more of that three tech type of role i think at a nose tackle position on obvious passing downs he could be valuable there maybe he could shade to one side or the other attack a gap however i think putting him there early downs is not the best spot for him and we'll see some examples of that just because because purely based on size, he's undersized for that. And when you have a Lee McNeil, you have John Penasini, heck, even Michael Brockers, there's really no need to put him in that spot. Now, the Lions did say that they were going to run a 3-4 style of defense, but we know there's a lot of different fronts in a 3-4 type of defense. Okay, so it's not just you have to play the 5-tech go against the tackle, because that may not be his best fit with his length, but you can get him in situations where he's playing the 3 technique, things like that, going against guards and attacking downhill. Uh, and that's obviously one of the biggest parts of his game. People call him mini Aaron Donald because he attacks so well, and that 3 technique technique is that spot where you know, usually have your premier pass rusher on the defensive line, and that's the role that he could play. So we're going to take a look at some different plays here. We have less film than you know some of the other ones, but one thing that you'll notice with this game, and it's probably the most heavily praised part of his game is his get off and it's it's really good he has a very good get off what i've noticed is how quickly he can really get in just a pass rushing stance where he's going downhill the speed very quickly because he's so explosive off the snap his 40 time was outstanding but he's so explosive uh, that he can get in and go full speed in just a couple of steps so especially in pass protection when you know offense linemen are backing up he's got a couple steps to get a full head of steam and he can come at you with a lot of power he's a very strong offense lineman as well with big hands all right so with that explosiveness that you know he has all the tangibles to uh, be very scary as a pass rusher so the first example we're gonna look at here he's going against the center and you're gonna see this is a pass play so the center begins to automatically back up and that gives him a couple steps now there are better reps than others you know not every rep is great not every rep he's the first guy off the ball but some he's the fastest guy off the ball and he just really impressed you so there is some fluctuation there which makes sense because he's kind of knows it's a little bit easier because he's watching the football but you know to beat the center that's like almost impossible other than just guessing here but you're gonna see how fast that he can really get going full speed and uh, you know his pad level to me definitely is questionable he plays very high sometimes it works because sometimes he's setting up stunts things like that but he does play very high however when his hand placement is good that's when he's really scary so he gets into full speed here very quickly his hand placement is great this center is just about to fall over and uh, you can see he's able to just kind of move him back and then he goes to the swim move see this is one thing that he does really well is he can kind of he knows what counter rush move to throw based on what his first move was uh, and, and they're all kind of within like he doesn't get outside of himself it's just an inside move you know he'll, he'll counter with an inside pass rushing move you know so he does a really good job with that and he's also very aware of teammates who's around him where are guys attacking from where are the blitz is coming from how can i open up these holes so stunts he's gonna be very good in stunts because he can either open up the play or he can be the guy that's coming through the opening so really good in those regards here he is though you can see really good hand placement gets right under his shoulders that's like his you know his spot because he does play tall so it's not great but he does occasionally have really good hands and when his hands are in a good spot usually he goes for under the shoulder and that's when he can just move guys around very strong big hands so he can use one hand he's in the 71st percentile over 10 inches long you know from the thumb to the pinky i think that's how they measure it it's super big hands though so he can you know he has really good grip and he can use one hand and kind of hold on to offensive linemen but here he is good hand placement and then he goes right into the swim move so he counters out of it perfectly and that allows him to get to the backfield of course you know the center falls down and he creates just havoc and the quarterback's getting out of the pocket there and this is what i said he plays at a lot of different looks he's lined up in a lot of different positions so we see him at nose tackle then here he is the very next play he's going against the left guard so he plays a lot of different position again another pass pass play and you can just see that this gives him the opportunity to build up some of that power he's got a lot of power 
All right, he had more bench press reps than Aline McNeil. He had the same amount as Derek Barnes. The guy's got a lot of power. He's a very well-built defensive lineman, which is going to help because he's athletic, he's fast, he's strong. Going against the left guard, he's got some build-up speed because he's able to get a couple of steps in here, and he's going full speed. You can see this is a really good one. He gets pad level low. He gets right inside the chest on this one. This was a great job, and you can just see how he throws off the right guard. I mean, left guard, just all that power throws him off. The issue is here, he's not able to finish with this one. You know, he ends up getting reconnected. He's not able to, like, bend underneath it because he does play kind of tall but still you can just see the power that he can build up and he's got a lot of power even just standing still against the run now here's what i'm saying this is where i don't love him and this is three four nose tackle you know zero technique right across the center he's not shading and he's trying to you know stop the run this is where he's gonna have problems now he did rotate in the washington defensive line and i expect that's gonna be something we see with the lions but I think for him, this is not the role you want to put him in unless it's an obvious pass down, unless he gets bigger. Because if, you, if you're going to get pushed off position in college, you know, it's going to be an issue at the next level. Obviously, he's responsible for two guys here. And that's tough. You have to be a very big body to hold this up. And you can see he gets kind of spun around. It's not really where you want him. This next play, and it shows up a little bit too full when you watch this film because he does have occasionally reps where he'll get sideways as a pass rusher, either trying to make himself skinny to get to the quarterback or setting up stunts. And when he gets sideways, it's easy to move him out of the way, move, move him out of the picture. However, he also displays a lot of times really good balance and he moves really well laterally throughout the defensive line. So that really helps him on stunts, moving across the defensive line, moving across the board. So what helps him a lot there is in terms of a pass rusher, the athleticism side of it. And for the most part, he does a good job of keeping really good balance, getting wide feet, especially against the run. Now, as a pass rusher, as I mentioned, there are flashes of him getting sideways and it's easy to push him out of the play. However, though, in run defense specifically, does a really good job of keeping a really strong foundation, uh, and that helps him a ton. You can see it here. He keeps really wide feet. He starts low, and his hand placement is inconsistent. You know, it's it's not consistently where it needs to be. A lot of times he can get outside, and then, yeah, obviously, he can be stonewalled by certain offensive linemen. However, even with inconsistent hand placement, he's so strong in the upper body that he can really push guys off. He's got big hands. The arm length is not great, and that's why playing him at a five tag, going against tackles, is questionable because the length isn't great. you got long tackles offensive tackles that is however in the inside specifically with those big hands the arm length doesn't show up as much and he's super strong in the upper body so even without great you know hand placement there he has pretty good pad level but without great hand placement he can really just move guys out of the way loves to go under your shoulders he moves them out of the way and then you know he's able to get up tall and he can see the running back in the backfield so that's just a really good run stop and it shows his effectiveness against the run from the inside he's he's an effective run defender he just doesn't have the build to be a, a nose tackle clogger right now and it goes right off what we just said it's just a pass rushing rep you know moving right laterally you can see it's a, a good base the pad level is an issue. He does, look how high he is. He gets extremely high. But as I mentioned, uh, what he does is, you know, he counters that right into a swim. See, that's the thing. He has a, he has a plan. He has a counter rush plan based on how he's going to attack. So if he's going to attack high, he can use that into bend to get lower. Here he's attacking high. And uh, obviously he transitions that right into a swim move. But moving well laterally across the line of scrimmage, which allows for rushers, him to get out of the way, him to get in the quarterback to set up stunts. And then again, the upper body. I mean, he's really strong. He kind of just grabs him there. I don't know if he had to, but he kind of grabs him. That's what I was talking about once again earlier, like based on his size. You don't really want him to try to be a nose tackle clogger. Uh, here he is. He's taking on two guys here. And, he, and he's doing a solid job holding his own. Like I said, look, I mean, he's got one hand here. He's got one hand here on both offensive linemen. And it's just that big hand, strong grip. And he throws him off. He sheds him at the end of the play. But he is going to be pushed out of that play a little bit. All right? Because he just he's just not like 320, 330 where he's just standing there and he's hard to move. You know, he he'll, he can definitely be moved. So that's not the role that I love him in. And again, like I said, he plays a lot of different roles. So we see him at nose tackle, and here he is, you know, back in the three tech, lining up directly across the guard. And I think that's where he's going to be at his best. Kind of like a rep we just seen. You know, he just kind of throws off the lineman here. He just pulls down, grabbing that uh, right shoulder, just pulls down with his left hand, and he throws him out of the way. And then, of course, you know, he kind of sinks and dips a little bit because he starts high and then gets into that dip to get by and uh, get to the quarterback. You see the athleticism. There's a lot of athleticism. Like I said, he's very aware of where his teammates are. Here's one where his teammate's going to blitz. So what he's basically going to do here is when his teammate blitzes that gap, he's going to slide and go head into a spin that his teammate is blitzing. And it really opens him up here. So when his teammate blitzes and he hits the spin, his teammate basically blocks him. It's like a screen for him. And then you can just see the athleticism that he can perform a lot of different pass rush moves. You know, it's still not fantastic bend out of it. Like we were looking at Lee McNeil. His is much worse. He stays really tall in those. But you can see the athleticism side of it where he can throw a lot of pass rush moves at you. I think it could be much deeper, add a lot to his arsenal. We could see more consistently, but he could do a lot of different things. And he has the, 
I guess, ability to throw a lot of different things. Here he is against the guard again, and this is another spin he's going to throw at you. And this is something that he had planned, right? He attacks here. He's got two guys to go against, so he attacks side and then tries to transition into that spin. Again, not bend, but not the great bed. Doesn't get low. He's a big, well-built guy, which is, could be an issue, you know, to play that defensive end position. You're not super long, so it can be an issue to disengage. Then at the same time, you don't have that great bend like a defensive end would have. So that's why I like him on the inside. But you can see the athleticism side of his game and the recognition of, you know, pulling together uh, the first move and the counter move and kind of sinking into that counter move. What do you think with his skill set, a four-eye technique could work as well because you get him on the inside shoulder of a tackle. He's attacking that gap to get to the inside. That could work much better trying to attack the outside of a tackle and you know, try to get around the edge. So I actually, I can see him against a tackle. I just think it depends on matchups, but when he is, attacking the inside of a tackle is probably going to be where he finds a lot of success. It's a run defender here. And this is what I'm talking about. Like, you know, it's not fantastic length, but it doesn't show as much. Able to just get right under that shoulder pad. That's what he gets. He gets right under your shoulder pad and he can just throw you out of the way i mean that's just it's great base first off all right he has a great foundation because he's you know keeping his feet wide if his feet were stuck together he wouldn't be able to do this so fantastic foundation you can see that here right look at oh look at that foundation and, and the guard you know he's stretching out so he's losing a lot of balance right now then he gets under that shoulder and he can throw you off his height allows him to see, uh, you know, where the running back is going, throws him off, and then he can go off and make a play. All right. So, yeah, definitely a lot of things to like there. Here we are in a goal line situation. He's getting one-on-one -on -one reps. You don't like him in one-on-one -on -one situations. Guy like Lee McNeil, you don't like this guy. This time he's taking on the center again. The center slides over. He gets inside. And look at him just kind of stand tall. I like this one because he attacks low. You know, his pad level is on and off too. Uh, it just kind of depends on how he's throwing a pass rush move at it. But here he demonstrates how low he can really get, you know, when he wants to get low. And obviously fatigue can be a factor like we saw with Lee McNeil. But when he wants to get low, he can get really low, gets really low on the center here. And then he gets himself straight up. The center is not pushing. There's no push whatsoever here from the center because of how low he gets initially. And then he just kind of holds his ground and he just waits. And, you know, he doesn't have to do anything, but he clogs that lane. So one-on-one, -on -one, one gap responsibilities, he can be a, he can be a lane clogger. And this one I'm talking about an awareness. Because of his lateral movement across the line of scrimmage, you can do things like this where you slide him here to set up a stunt. He understands that the stunt's coming. So he kind of tries to grab both of the offensive linemen and it sets up you know the pass rusher and then i love the fact that he he finishes like a lee mcneil both these guys have the motor they have the energy to play through it they don't just stop on the play so here he's gonna play through it right you know he gets kind of low he's just got that big hand on him and he's gonna keep fighting and keep working to try to get involved in that play this one is just fantastic kind of a few things that we've already talked about just summed up into one play good base right it's really quick out of the burst. I mean, the burst is really fast off the line of scrimmage. Right off the snap, he's really quick. Boom, right off the snap. You know, some this guy's just getting out of stance. He's already up. He's already up. You see that quick step. And look how he sets up his base compared to everybody else. Right, what's this? Really wide base, quickly into a stance. That's where he really benefits. And then gets right under that shoulder. And this is like a karate takedown, man. And just throws that guy on the ground. What? Yo, that's a combination of a lot of little things going on there that you'd love to see. Here he goes against the nose. And this is like the prime example of burst off the line of scrimmage. Just not talking, this guy has ability to get off the line of scrimmage so fast. I mean, he is off before, look at him. He's off before anybody else is. He is sprinting. While this guy is still, he's still got his hand in there and he is sprinting. That's what they say when he has the burst. And better, right, there are some reps that are better than others. Are occasions like this where he is so fast. And that can lead to big plays in the backfield. And he's just so quickly up here. And again, he's setting up a stunt. You know, he's setting up a stunt. So, yeah, he gets a little sideways, allows the offensive lineman to get inside his chest. Could have been better, but he's attacking and it sets up, you know, this pass rush, you know, from the outside. But he keeps going after it. So, didn't really finish his play how you would how you would hope because he allows him to get inside his body. And then, obviously, he's just, you can see the effort. He allows him to get inside his body a little bit too easily there. But it, did, it was a distraction for the pass rush. But you could just see the get off on that play. So, there are things that are a little bit... The pad level, that hand placement, there's inconsistencies there. You know, he can get stonewalled. He has occasions getting sideways. But there's also the strength. There's the power. There's the balance. There's those. There's, there's the athleticism that you can't really teach, that you can definitely build off. And that's why he has the kind of pass rush win rate numbers. And it doesn't even always look that polished. But he has those numbers. How about, about inconsistent hand placement? You know, sometimes he does this on purpose. You can see, again, the phenomenal get off. Look, look how fast he's off the line compared to his defensive end here. Look at this. I mean, <laughs> this dude's still on the ground and he's going. So it's great, but you can see he gets kind of tall. He gets on top of the shoulder pads. It really hurts his leverage because of the, you know, bad, you know, you know because of the bad pad level. And this offensive line is able to get inside. And then, of course, he slows it down. But then, you know, obviously, you know, he has that little bit of a bend. 
you put them on a tackle, it can be issues to disengage because they're just long. But against those inside guys, you know, look, I mean, he's got them on the shoulder here, and he can just kind of push them out of the way. Big hands can kind of just push those and move those guys out of the way to create some space. Back at nose tackle here. And again, you just see the glimpses of getting high, like very high on this play. I mean, he stood straight up and that moves pushed him sideways. It's easy to throw a guy off his balance when he gets that high, when he doesn't get low. And there's a lot of occasions where he doesn't get low. So as I say, inconsistent hand placement is because of inconsistent pad level. Sometimes your role isn't to take that center one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes your role is that this gap. You know, then you can see here he's able to get through that gap and then this guy runs right into him and pushes him through. So pad level is definitely inconsistent and it's something that could be better. Uh, but you can see there's a lot of things to like in his game. Once again, at nose tackle here, this time he gets pretty low. He tries to go to that push pull and finish. He's not able to finish here. I think Ali McNeil might be able to help him because Ali McNeil does this at a high, very high level. But he gets inside, good hand placement, and then he goes to the pull down. Not able to do it, but he sticks with it. And you can just see the raw power here. I mean, he's just driving this guy back. Okay, I couldn't disconnect. Dang, some of that has to do with length because you're so close and tight on the body like we were talking about with drake jackson when your length isn't fantastic you have to get really close to guys so he's very close here and he's not able to kind of pull down you know but you can see just the pure power and he's just running him backwards like in levi's game but i also can after watching this understand why people were so high on Ali mcneil because mcneil in the third round looks like just an incredible value when i watched him compare him to levi that's not to say he's better than levi levi is really nice and i think what levi you know has is so much upside as a pass rusher in the inside you know the length is a little bit concerned for some of the outside positions but with his athleticism his raw power his big hands you know you can see the balance there his run defense is actually stellar I was so impressed by that and the fact that he put up the kind of numbers that he did with inconsistent you know and not being super polished on hand placement pad level but his ability to set up stunts I mean when you talk about a defense that wants to run stunts that wants to get after the quarterback wants to get downhill wants to fill gaps you have him in a one gap defense he's gonna eat you know there's little things that can be cleaned up but he's already doing big things he was already doing big things and it wasn't always that clean, but he still found a way to get back to the quarterback because he's got the same motor, same energy, just like uh, we saw with Ali McNeil. He's a very smart player with this counter moves to me because he's very smart, you know, situational. Who am I going against? Is it a vertical set? Like, what's the offensive lineman doing? And then he's very smart to kind of say, okay, you know, I went this route with my first attack. So now I'm going to go into a swim move, you know, something inside because my first attack was inside. So I think he's very smart in those regards. Some of his counter pass rush moves because sometimes those are better than his initial strike, which is just bold. What he is lacking a little bit some of that closing ability um you know not necessarily just bend but you know some of the finishing that like we saw in that last clip the un unability the unable to you know finish that pull down clears off and slime and get to the quarterback he lacks some of that you know for lee mcneil he lacked the bend he lacked the speed to close off the play he lacks some of that finishing move ability i think and those are like the little parts he's gonna be a pressure player he's a pressure guy he's pressure just running past people because he's just like i'm getting to the quarterback like Nick, no matter what you ain't gonna stop me i'm gonna get there now it's about just refining some skills and then those sack numbers will start to go up because he gets the pressures the sack numbers just aren't always there because he doesn't finish extremely well because of some of these inconsistencies pad level hand placement things like this also because he played a lot at the nose tackle which i just don't think is the best fit for him at the next level at least if it's not you know in passing downs uh but i think when you look at him he does have the hot stretches and he'll have the cold stretches you know and sometimes his get off isn't always as good he has usually really good get off but sometimes it's dominant fast other times it's you know this looks kind of normal so i think for him and that's not a bad thing it's just it's just what most people look like but for him it's just about you know finding some of that consistency within his game but i think the reason that he was picked so high is because for the talent perspective there's so much to unfold here and just dust up and he could be just a monster at the next level i mean there's so much that he can be and he didn't even play in 2020 that's the thing like he opted out last season so he didn't have that year to polish some things up so there's still some question marks but he worked out all offseason you know he probably worked out when he wasn't playing so now he's heading into a year we don't know what we're gonna see i mean it was two years ago since we've seen his tape right so he could look much better now and then you consider like there's little things we could still polish up in his game what he level he was playing at while not being the most polished is in incredible. Some people had him so high, I think, is because he was doing what he was doing, and not everything was even that clean, yet he was still doing it. But yet you could throw him in so many different situations. You could move him around the defensive line. You could probably play him at the at the five technique if you wanted to. Not all the time. I wouldn't, but you could in certain three, four looks because he did that in college too. You could put him everywhere all over the field. So you can do that with him. You can run stunts. He's athletic. Pass rushers are tough to find, especially in the interior. Lions may have found one here with this size. So no tackle. Yeah, I don't love it. At least on, on early downs. Pass rushing downs, I'm good with that. You know, you put him on the center, you know the pass coming. Yeah, line him up against the center. Heck yeah, let's do it. Let's go to battle. But I don't love it on early downs. But either way, Levi's going to be impactful, I think, you know, just like Aline McNeil year one. And they're both going to really help this Lions defensive line. And he's got a high ceiling. So let me know your thoughts, comments below. Thank you, Pat, for watching. And I'm out.